Here's <laughs> shotgun guy. That's how you make a family. Say the kid has a question on the board he wants you to answer. No, that's not him. Huh? <laughs> you put that up there. I didn't. He put it. I was just copying what he was saying, so. Okay. Actually, this is Okay, he's going to show. He'll, he has it. Go ahead. Hello. Smell it, huh? Crap. No. The bees to be. Honey. <laughs> right. <laughs> One has to be particular about something. It's, it's not there today. All right. Okay. I'll settle. Oh, so yeah, it's right done. Good timing. This is the girl who wears red shoes. Wherever she is. If she doesn't, let's hope her sister does. Does. Yeah, yeah. Need help on that. I hope you brought a drain. Oh. I answered the last two questions. He answered the last two questions as yes and yes. Is that a good answer? Did that help you understand how he understands it? No, no. Is that what's required? Well, shouldn't you explain your yes? <laughs> okay, for if you are looking for the self and cannot find it, is it not likely one can say there is nothing there? Yes. Now he gave it more feeling. Does that add to it? It's not there, so it's no. no. It's likely that it's not there. Okay, all right, so I'm supposed to explain that. Yeah, he's going to explain it now. If I'm looking for the self and can't find it. Uh, have you by chance ever looked? Yeah, like in meditation. Oh, have you found it yet? No, I often have experienced this thing where well, then, looking, 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 and it's like I'm looking. I can't get. Can't find it. Can't find it. There's nothing. Yeah. But then you know what nothing is. It's all right. Know what nothing is. Yeah. <laughs> Did that help? Yeah. yeah he's. Going around trying to well, find an answer this, to it. This is a thing. This is and this is a thing. And I, I I would never call it a thing, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, and I can find it. Yeah, right. I can touch it. Yeah. I can relate to it. Yeah. But a self in meditation. It ain't there. Like, it's not like that. It's not a thing like that. If it's there. Yeah. Notice if it's there. He can't find it, so I guess he thinks it's nothing. Yeah. Did you see that crazy, well, I mean, that strange woman? She, she said, she caught it and she ran with that ugly dog. That mean, fat, ugly, but right? Dog. Yeah. Oh, you know, I have a thing with me. Right there. If you have paper and pencil or something, write out your answer. If you're good at extemporaneous speeches. Okay, it's essential that you have an answer to this question.
See, the entire time is, <clears throat> it's nothing other than <clears throat> to answer that question. So why does he need the whole time is to answer that question? Do you think it's fair to call on Igmar first? Absolutely. Yeah. Excuse me, he suggests that you answer that. Mm. You can get help. <laughs> no, no. <clears throat> you can get help. <laughs> okay. Look who you're sitting next to. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's kind of a big idea. What? It's a big idea. It's yeah, I noticed that. It has that many letters, so it's big. Uh, yes, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. No. 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 No, he was asking uh, <coughs> why does it take the whole of the time is? Oh, to answer the question? Yes, why does it take the whole of the time is to answer that question? Because I think you have to nail it down to understand it. <laughs> You have to nail it, nail it down to understand it. Wait a minute. <laughs> that could be right, but that, does, does that help us understand what the word means? See, that was it. She was going to explain. Oh, okay. She's You're right. Answer. You're right again. <laughs> so I wanted to. Good. Uh, I wanted to say that it's the good for all. Providence is the good for all. Go ahead. Come on, I, come on, just say more. Um, it, it, um, it, it, it takes care of everything. But why does that end up being an answer to the question, what is providence? That's why you need the time is. Quite true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John, help her out, show her. Still got the question. I, no, I got stuck on something you said uh, that I was, I was pondering, and I didn't really hear the last part. I was, mm. I was stuck on something you said. Um, but I like most of what he said. <coughs> OK, that's a good, good beginning then, right? You liked most of what he said. Can we add to it? Yeah, Brad, you were going to add to it? Yeah, I, I have a, 
Providence is that which is prior to the intelligence bestowing goodness throughout the cosmos. Oh. Go ahead, add to it. Um, Good beginning. I do that myself. Uh, I have something to say. Thank you. Do you mind? <laughs> Oh, I will mind by paying well, attention to what she says. Well, I, I, I didn't see. Go ahead. I don't mind you don't see me. Continue to do what you're saying. I like uh, what you uh, So I said providence is the divine unfolding of events, and it's the result of what came before and could be seen in advance if you knew how events function for their teleological good. So, I'm using many syllable words. But, okay. <laughs> Wrap it up. Good shot. Hey, look. Dude, that's good. David. <laughs> that the only final true goal for mankind is for <laughs> yeah, Add that to everybody, everybody else. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I put pure goodness in the nature of reality, foreseeing and distributing a good appropriate to each throughout all space and time. Informing the dream world and a companion and a companion of every state of mind, both awake and asleep. Nice. It's interesting. Okay, look here. Just take a look at the first paragraph. At thirty, and the time is because that first paragraph lines it up. Let's take a look at it. Now, there are a couple of words in there that you want to change because they're important to change. But in this one paragraph, it clearly, it clearly separates itself from the whole movement of Gnostic, Hermetic, All of that tradition that emerged, that came into Europe in the 15th century, was essentially this. Right from, from the, four, the end of the 14th century, 15th century, Europe was dominated by these two ideas. <clears throat> All the way to the present. This one paragraph, <clears throat> takes exception to that. It shows that if this paragraph is true, you can reject this whole thesis of Gnostic thought, Hermetic thought. Now, throughout the whole thing, there's one word that's important, as you know, and that's the Logos. Let's take a look. Let's get a reader just to look at that first paragraph. Thank you. Let us now state the cause. Wherefore, he that constructed it, constructed becoming and the all. He was good, and in him that is good, no envy ariseth ever concerning anything. And being devoid of envy, he desired that all should be, so far as possible, like unto himself. Mm. This principle, then, we shall be wholly right in accepting from men of wisdom as being above all the supreme originating principle of becoming and the cosmos. Right, got it? Beautiful, right? Yes, go ahead. For God desired that so far as possible all things should be good and nothing evil. Wherefore, when he took over all that was visible, seeing that it was not in a state of rest, but in a state of discordant and disorderly motion, he brought it into order out of disorder, deeming, <coughs> deeming that the former state is in all ways better than the latter. For him who is most good, it neither was nor is permissible to perform any action save what is most beautiful. As he reflected, therefore, 
he perceived that of such creatures as are by nature visible, none that is irrational will be more beautiful, comparing holes with holes, than the rational. And further, that intellect cannot possibly belong to any apart from soul. So because of this reflection, he constructed intellect within soul and soul within body as he fashioned the all. That so the work he was executing might be of its nature most beautiful and most good. Thus then, in accordance with a likely account, we must declare that this cosmos has verily come into existence as a living creature endowed with soul and intellect owing to the providence of God. Yeah. A living creature endowed with soul and logos owing to the providence of God. Right? Now look, <clears throat> the whole development of uh, this tradition gave birth to uh, Freemasonry, uh, Rastafarianism. These are the four, these are the primary ideas that emerge from this. Hey, Benjamin Franklin, right? Washington, Jefferson, Hamilton, all of these people were Freemasons. Freemasonry, right on our bills, carries all the symbols of this hermetic tradition called Freemasonry. What's essential about them that makes it different from what we're reading? For them, the one thing that's very clear is the body is the source of evil. Right? The body is the problem. Man has fallen, right? Has fallen from the eternal into the temporal, entered in a body, and that's the problem we have. Therefore, it's a war. It's a war between the body and the soul. How would you say this paragraph addresses that issue? I have to go back into it. Let's see it. It makes it divine. It, it's, uh, it holds the soul and the intellect, so it would be a sacred container. Therefore, the body would be? The sacred <clears throat> container. Mm, more? I like that. More? Right. Come on. <laughs> well, he composed the generation and the hall. And he wouldn't do anything that wasn't most beautiful and good. Yeah, see, so the word all. Is filled yeah. with goodness. <clears throat> the word all is important. This is not a story of creation. It's a story of creation and the all. What's the difference? The metaphysics is the all. Oh, okay. Therefore, generation and the all. Right. Okay. Right. So therefore, he filled both levels. He both <laughs> levels. And both letters come from, have their origin from? Him who desires the most best and most good. God. And can bring it. Uh, more? How does this differ what you're saying about metaphysics? Because before, you've rejected that the Timaeus has metaphysics. But it's a different kind of metaphysics. Uh, it's a metaphysics that deals only with creation. It doesn't deal with metaphysics in itself. Okay. Mm. Right? Which is <clears throat> which is central to the whole time is. Because of this subject. So he wants to show providence. Therefore the implications of providence and the kind of universe created in Plato called the time is, is to justify the fact that all creation and they all 
represents a divine insight into the goodness of man and creation. Therefore, there is no war. Like our institutions, schools and everything else, are basically Freemasonry. Non-metaphysics, they have a rule. Don't talk about metaphysics in a classroom. It's outlawed. This is the position they hold. Rather interesting. Look, see whether you can pull something else. Look here. Pardon me? The yes. Speaker next, uh, Taylor, anybody? Oh. So how about this line? He desired that all should be as far as possible like unto himself. Hmm. <coughs> Pardon me. Ah, that's a principle. How does he take that and develop a principle out of that phrase? It's a great expression. The principle, then, we shall be wholly right in accepting from men, from men of wisdom as a being, as being above all the supreme originating principle of becoming and the cosmos. Right? The supreme originating principle of becoming and the cosmos is generated out of that one line, all should be as far as possible like unto himself. So therefore, hey, the likeness of God is nothing other than the universe and all. Right? So one is the model, the other is the copy. There's no place for evil. There's no tension and war between good and evil. Ah. But there is beautiful and ugly. Sure, but that's not the same thing as good and evil. What's the difference? Well, yeah, well, you know, of course, evil is as is a principle in reality or principle right. in the universe. Right. It's inherent in the universe. Different than the absence of beauty. Right. 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 <clears throat> That's well said. Right. So, hey, look here. <coughs> and further, that reason cannot of this reflection he concluded, he constructed reason within soul and soul within body and as he fashioned the all that uh, so that the work he was executing might be of its nature both beautiful and most good ah hey the founding fathers of the United States are Gnostics Freemasonry, Rosicrucianism, that's what they that's what they were into. That's molded American consciousness. That comes out of Gnostic and Hermetic thought. Specifically with regard to Gnostic and Hermetic thought, I mean Hermetic means sealed, right? And Masonry is a system of degrees and unveiling of knowledge to initiates. Is it not that there's, I think there's still very platonic in that, if you pull in from Lysis, Socrates says that uh, parents trust their children with responsibility when they're ready for the responsibility. Sure. And so some of the metaphysical knowledge is potentially very dangerous, and therefore it's not granted widely uh, due to the yeah. Today, 
the power of that knowledge? I mean, is that a, it, not from a sense of good versus evil, but from a sense of a child playing with fire? Yes, well, you can put it that <clears throat> Plato thinks that all human problems start with the family, and families generate problems in their children as carrying on a tradition that goes on from generation to generation under four categories. No? Curious, is it, huh? But, but isn't, that, isn't that different than what he was saying? He, he was saying that families... Yes, I had to. Stop kids from knowing <coughs> metaphysics. That would be one of the four kinds of yes. logos. Well, if you stop metaphysics from a child or don't allow them access to that, I mean, isn't that where a child's coming from in the first place? Is they're in tune with the beautiful and the good, aren't they? I think we agree. Well, hold on a second. Well, so does he? The, 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 yeah. Let me, let me defend my point on, on that front. The specific passage from Lysis is uh, he's talking to Lysis and he says he's a slave within your family they hire a slave to be your tutor and do you do you have to obey a slave? Are you a free man? And, and he says I do because in that domain of tutoring the slave you know, has and, and similarly a horse to the ship uh, can you take the horses out? Well no because he's not a master of horses so, uh, just is there some element to this study that there's a. Uh, the, the, go ahead. I'm he's, listening. Uh, Respond, uh, please. Well, I'm just going <clears throat> to say, I mean, in the Lysis, he's, he's trying to make a point. He, he's, he's, he wants to shame Lysis in front of Lysis' admirers. That's right. By showing that, hey, the parents don't trust you with anything that you don't have any qualification for knowledge about. Right. Right. That's different. That's different than saying. That's different than saying that a parent is obligated to withhold the metaphysical knowledge of beauty and good from their children because they can't be trusted with it. Well, now in the Republic. Good. So in the Republic, what is the purpose of the noble lie then? So I think it's just that, is it not? Do they withhold the knowledge, or do they do, are they deprived of the knowledge? That's what I believe. Because you can teach metaphysics in a family by being fair and just in whatever you're doing. That's the foundation for metaphysics. That there is a good that is manifested in the family. There's a freedom to express yourself. And you can grow and develop in a kinship with the family with, to achieve the highest excellence. That's the foundation for metaphysics. You don't have to hold back or teach. It comes natural then, if they wake up to logos. See, the whole thing in this is the logos. Right? That higher vision of the reason and understanding. Yeah? Yeah, in the Republic, if you took it literally, there would be a whole group of class of people who would, you would have to deprive of a certain kind of knowledge yes. if you took it literally. Yeah. Yes. But I don't think that's what, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I have to be held back from certain things because um, my passions will take me there. But that doesn't mean my soul um, isn't aware of perfection. And I, yeah, I have a high-spirited part, but that doesn't mean um, I, I'm, I, I shouldn't be allowed to enjoy certain things. Right. And, but if you took it literally, then yes, I'd have to keep each one of those things apart. So mm -hmm. I, I think you have to be careful about making a literal. Well, um, yeah, and also with reference to the noble lie or the useful lie, as it's called, right? The idea is if, right, it's really got it good in the cephalus section, right? If someone gives you their weapons when they're in a healthy state of mind, and then they go mad and say, please give me my weapons back, right? He's, he's confuting the idea that it's justice to give the man his weapons back if he's not in a good state of mind. Right. Or tell him the whole truth in such a state. The particular right, so you're not going to tell, right, the truth is dangerous, in other words. You've got to be careful who you tell it to. No, that's a principle that lying is just. <laughs> lying is just. No. I don't like it. <laughs> in, 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 the, in the 
in case I'm returning the weapon. <clears throat> but that's the, that's the issue. That's the issue he raises. If someone comes to you and they gave you their weapons for safety and they come back and they're mad and demanded, are you going to reason with them? They're already angry and furious. So he lies because the person can't stand the truth. Right. I mean, if, if through gifts of agogic insight, what we're able to know the nuclear launch codes, right? You wouldn't, you wouldn't want that information out in the public, right? We wouldn't trust just anyone. But yeah, apparently we do. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I was making a joke, and he was making a point. So he, he, I bet it was a good joke. Uh, apparently, you would give the launch codes to just anyone. Just anyone. <laughs> 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 so what was, I'm sorry, I think I lost the thread of the point. Were you bringing up these her, hermetic, hermetics and Gnostics to say that it's just to, just what they do because you don't teach I, I lost why you brought that I up. just wanted to say that they weren't necessarily out of sync with Plato, uh, but okay. perhaps your knowledge of the higher uh, teachings, but perhaps our knowledge uh, is simply lacking. We're, we're denied, uh, we aren't in the class of um, those who... I'm not a 33rd degree Mason. In general, that would be the case, right? So then, I was wondering, Pierre, about this. What do you see then that they, what's the consequences that they drop providence? Like, because you brought it back to these founding no, no. fathers. Like, <clears throat> when they drop providence, they drop the logos. This and, ends with the principle of the logos. This whole work is trying to demonstrate that there is a logos, and that is providential. And there's a logos everywhere. That, everything, that everything. covers all things. And then a logos of all things also right. at the same time. Right. So the fact that our country was founded by people that don't believe in the principle of the logos has led to... That's right. Okay, that's... Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, <clears> saying, I'm saying that's not correct. Our country was founded by people who believe in the principle of the logos. If you go to, you know, just north of the White House, uh, the 33rd degree Scottish right there. The word logos is carved up. You're, you're welcome to go in. You'll see the word logos okay. in the middle of the we'll try. Yeah, well, the New Testament has got the logos in it too, but it doesn't mean it's that. Right? I was just saying, right, the New Testament, John, has got the logos in it, but... No, it, it doesn't. doesn't. No, it doesn't. Yes, he does. See, in the, 20, the first 23 lines of John, it ends in belief. Logos ends in belief, incarnated in Jesus. If, if, you, if you go downstairs to so, the library, I'm sorry. So that's what happened to Logos in Christianity. That is, if you look at the first 23 lines of John. To try to back it up, it is the same <clears throat> Logos. If you go downstairs in the library, there are busts. The first is Cicero, then Plato, then Socrates, then Pythagoras. I'm pretty sure it's the same Logos. What's it called? The 30... 30. Third degree. Uh, you know, the problem is I think we would need more than a bus and more than the logos as, as a word. I really do. And and that might mean some 33rd degree might have to reveal or you might <coughs> have to give some paraphrase of that content Con to the... Right? It's, it's not enough to have a bust of Socrates or Plato, to my way of thinking. Right. In other words, the logos hold, hold, it, hold it, hold it, let it finish. Let's, let's that, finish. That's it. I just was okay. saying, you know, I take your, I take your point that the imagery that they're using suggests a connection to Platonic thought, but we really would need to see something, wouldn't we? I was just saying we'd need to see the actual thought because yeah. to connect to say, okay, the Masonic as a representation of the Hermetics. Uh, philosophy is in fact uh, pure. It doesn't contain this idea of the body is the source of evil, <clears throat> right? And therefore, I thought you're connecting it to our country was in fact founded upon a system that is pure in the sense of not <clears throat> suggesting a good and evil dichotomy. 
Is that correct? Okay. Hmm. I was just going to say, in other words, you could use the word logos, but it's got to have some logos for it to mean what we understand by the logos. Yes. The grammar of yes. the word would have to be. Yes. Like the whole. No, no, the content, the content of what logos is, is what we're looking for. See, the, the logos in Plato ends up being the, the one word that describes most fully the Parmenides hypothesis. It is the logos. Oh, my friend. <laughs> what? This, this is this, this, the idea he has suggested on several occasions. When we're at very lofty heights, and it's something I would aspire to see, and he has. It, no, no. Yeah, well, yeah, all of us. <laughs> right? Glimpses. Glimpses. But right right I mean, now, he's given us a beautiful task uh, to see how the, all the language of the, of the second hypothesis is that terms in a certain section are necessa necessary terms from the uh, use of said, said terminology in the um, second hypothesis up to that point. And we're talking, I think, 146, sorry, by the time we get to... So we're like from 142 to 146, something along that line. If you, mm -hmm. if you shoot me an email or something, I will, in fact, give you the exact references. Mm -hmm. But it's... Uh, you. <laughs> That's all I have to say. I felt somewhat wordless. Before you <laughs> so, if that's what the logo says, uh, Parmenides hypotheses and the Parmenides, and it, and in respect to the universe, it's in the timeus. Right. So then, that's taking it into the world of generation and the all. Yes. Not just into the right. physical world. That's right. So we would then look for the same <clears throat> terms mm -hmm. and relationships developed in the Parmenides yeah. and see how he does it in this yeah. world of yeah. becoming <clears throat> Perhaps uh, we once did uh, the Pearl, <clears throat> done about 10 years or 20 years ago. <laughs> the Pearl. Oh, and 20 because yeah. I've been around for 20 <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Point Mandarins. Point Mandarins. Right. And that was the primary text behind this movement. Mm. <clears throat> I know that we did it, but I don't remember. Well, you see, <clears throat> um, a minor historical point, but Plato's texts came into Europe with Bessarion and Plethon, right? And when they came with the Greek text for the first time into Europe, the Medici's, Casimimo, what he wanted was the Hermetic literature. And therefore, he urged Pacino to translate the works of the Pearl or Gnostic literature before any Plato. Mm. Then Pacino then went on to translate all of Plato, believing, by the way, in principle, that the Gnostic tradition was true. See, what is it, historically, just for a minor point, uh, This is the golden chain. This is the golden chain. It was thought at the time, it was generally accepted from St. Augustine on, that these two traditions had the same origin. Therefore, you could find correspondences between the two. <clears throat> And therefore, they welcomed the Hermetic tradition because the Hermetic tradition was, was not announcing 
how to read this tradition. That's the key. Right. What is it? What is the assumption? The assumption was that this view is hermetic. This is a basic philosophical model of hermeticism. <clears throat> And it lasted for several hundred years until a dude by the name of Casaubon a Frenchman, looked at it and said, excuse me, there's only a small problem with this idea. <clears throat> if, you look at the, if you look at the Greek, you'll find that if you skillfully look at the Greek and uh, Hebrew, the written text, you can see that these are not corresponding. This is in principle false because this is supposed to be 1200 BC. And then he said, hey, you know what, Pythagoras, you're not talking about, you're talking about 600 BC. This, this whole development is in principle false. Or uh, the theory. Yeah. The theory of the development. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> But this was held by Ficino, the translator of all the Plato and the Platonic thought. And uh, <clears throat> once this was revealed, <coughs> then formally the schools and the thinkers gave up on this <laughs> and accepted the Gnostic vision based upon Hermetic literature. And therefore, our early thinkers in our own country were inspired by the same tradition. Yeah. They didn't deal with the implications of Casabon because they didn't read, they didn't get into literature of this critical nature until many hundreds of years later. Well, this, what you're, everything you're saying fits the fact that we have like a, a Christian character in this country, right? But, yeah, but see, Christianity equally was shaped by this because they found they could use hermetic thought with its tension between the body and the soul and making the body evil. It fit within their own views and therefore they can encompass it within their system. So, by the way, a very good book I uh, mentioned before is Francis Yates. Right. She really, she's probably one of the, from my own thinking, one of the great geniuses of the 20th century. Brilliant woman. She did several works on this and she goes through the whole history of this and it's very vital and it's interesting and profound. She followed it all, did, did a beautiful job of it. Did the work on Bruno and pre-Socratic pre, uh, pre thought. Beautiful pieces of work. Cool. What, which book of hers addresses this? Well, I, I don't know. I read them all. Oh, okay. So that's I good. believe Bruno is a good one, but there's another title that, that escapes me at the moment. Uh, see, Bruno, Bruno and uh, <coughs> Pico developed, therefore, the idea that <coughs> uh, the heart of this tradition is in the Kabbalah. And therefore, they went to the Kabbalah, Pico, Pico della Miranda, etc. They started the great study of the Kabbalah, believing that this is in the Hebrew tradition and goes back to 1200 BC under Moses. That's their claim. By the way, one of the most foremost Jewish scholars who did a work on the history of the Kabbalah <clears throat> uh, says, by the way, you can't find the Kabbalah in any literary form until the 12th century because uh, he identifies the people in Spain, Islamic Spain. There were some Jews and Platonists got together <coughs> and they took the Parmenides and they ripped it into the Kabbalah. Same number of hypotheses, etc. He said, it's really a production of, of uh, the impact of Platonism and Judaism. And they came up with the Kabbalah. So therefore, it only it came into existence in the 12th century. 
But uh, in spite of the fact that all kinds of people keep saying it's as ancient, goes back to Moses. Oh. Yeah, a friend of mine was into it. Remember him? Yeah, he said Moses said it. Yeah, yeah, Apatow. Apatow, Rob Apatow, yeah. What, what, did he, what did Rob Apatow say? He, he was a, a very fine Platonist until he decided to go to Israel and became an Orthodox Jew. And uh, was deeply, deeply involved in the Kabbalah as expressing Judaism and didn't like this idea that it really came out of Spain in the 12th century. Trouble people with facts. That's that trouble with facts. <laughs> it's very disturbing. <laughs> I think we have a president who believes in alternate facts, <laughs> right? He doesn't even know what the hell a fact is. He makes up facts. Right? He's the maddest of all masters. <laughs> yeah. I'm running out of voices. Go on. Okay. I, 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 ah! Go yeah. so I'll quit. Thank you, dear. Really, if you want to get into this, it's a beautiful story Yates did. And uh, I think it's very important. Because our country, we see, was founded by these thinkers. Um, how and is it uh, that they're so interested in uh, geometry? I mean, they, uh, there's a great YouTube documentary that's, that's been archived on, on the history of the Freemasons and how uh, all of Washington, D.C. is, is laid out along these, uh, these uh, uh, geometric lines that all, that all uh, repeat themselves again and again, uh, one of which is at the end of this Scottish, uh, right? Mm -hmm. um, why were they so interested in, how does geometry play into their, into their philosophy? Well, the, <clears throat> so you try it the other way around. How did the idea of a new city designed in such a way that would bring about the goodness of man? That was a theme that came from ancient Egypt. They thought if you could build a city under great principles, geomet geometric, you would then <clears throat> create a condition where people would naturally develop a harmonious life and uh, the city of Helipolis, which is a Greek name in an Egyptian city, was one of the cities. And the Middle Ages, when they caught that idea, especially in France, they wanted to design models of city along the Egyptian idea of the sacred city. And that became a Gnostic principle, or a metric <coughs> principle, that the Freemasons followed. And uh, as far as they're concerned, that would solve the problem of good and evil. I think it would be a good way to sell Coca-Cola. You don't think so, Barbara? I do think so. That and, and mouse ears, maybe, I don't know. By the way, oh. Yeah, great. Yeah, that's a... What this is other, the one you meant, right? Yeah, do you have the other stuff of hers? Oh, wow. Elizabethan Ages one, and what else? Let's see. The Rosicrucian Enlightenment. Rosicrucian Enlightenment. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, yeah, you missed the Rosicrucian. Yeah. 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 Running out of my voice. <laughs> Hi, guys. The occult philosophy of the Greek corpus hermeticum? Yes. Yes. Cool. Thank you.